today with another video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most useful ways you guys can take dull scenes and make them a lot better. Even if you have a cool scene like this, driving along this road, very nice and scenic, I'm going to teach you guys some compositing tricks within After Effects and Cinema 4D, all the way from the basic understandings to the advanced understandings so that you can composite in some really cool stuff just like this. Now we have some basic things like this structure right here. I'm going to show you how to design and composite in this animated figure from Cinema 4D here. And you guys can use these techniques to create some really flashy scenes or even transitions just like this one right here. I'm also going to talk about the best render settings, the best ways to do things, helpful tips, all that. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you're looking for any new presets or plugins to help up your game, check out my website, link down below, MediaMonopoly.co. Anyways, let's get right into this. Now what I did to this clip beforehand is I just did a simple little color grade as well as I just added a little warp stabilizer effect. Super simple to do that. That's just going to make it a little bit more smooth. The more smooth footage you have, the easier it's going to be whenever you come to tracking this. Now, I also recommend what you do next is so that you don't have to worry about any of this Premiere stuff interfering with your After Effects work. Export all the adjustments you did out. Okay, so once you've done that, let's go ahead and just drag that rendered out clip into Premiere. And now we are ready to bring this into After Effects and start doing some of this compositing. So let's right click on our clip and let's go to replace with After Effects composition. And so now we have our footage within After Effects. Let's go ahead and get this ready to track. Now, I've talked about this method a lot, so I'm going to kind of go through this fast to give you guys some of the information I haven't talked about before that's going to make your element stuff look more realistic as well as talk about some of the other things I want to cover in this video but I just want to show you guys a quick little cool example for you to see exactly what we're going to be showing you so here's a cool little example of what you can do with tracking and compositing stuff in so this was directed by Nicholas Jandora he's done a lot of stuff with Little Skies as well as edited by Bradley Adam shout out to them they both have a really unique style and I saw this video and I thought it was a good example so as you see here just track the footage of this guy in the desert and then he put in these pyramids which just makes the scene a lot more interesting so to do that what we're going to do is right click on our footage we're going to go to track and stabilize and we're just going to click track camera so our track just went through you can click on it in our effect controls to see what it really looks like just some 3d points along the ground and along the trees so now we can composite in whatever we'd like and if for some reason this track doesn't work you may need to use a different clip or like i said do that warp stabilizer then render it out to see if it's a little bit more smooth if you have shaky footage that's hard to track the computer might not be able to pick it up so make sure you guys keep that in mind let's go ahead and just pick a place where we're going to composite in um, some kind of structure. Now what I'm going to composite in is just this simple little kind of um, archway and this is for free on Turbo Squid. Link to this down in the description. Of course you guys can look through any other free stuff on Turbo Squid. Some more fancy and flashy things but I'm just going to use this. Make sure you guys pay attention to the formats that are included. This one comes as an OBJ so we'll be able to use it in Element 3D. Later on when we hop into Cinema 4D or any kind of other 3D software you're working with you're going to want to be using something like an FBX or the respective actuals type for your software and let's go ahead and just make a little plane um, that we can use as a little reference whenever we're going to be bringing this in so let's use our mouse and just hover over these points until we can get um, a kind of nice spot where we'd like to play something right click and click create solid and camera now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click off of this 3d camera tracker and I'm just going to click on my track solid and just kind of position it more to my liking so I'm just gonna open up these transform options down here and you can go ahead and change the rotation you can change the scale and then let's play over and see what it looks like also if you lag a little bit you can change the quality from full to third just to kind of make it run a little bit smoother so like I said before this plane is just gonna serve as a reference point but it's also gonna come in handy later on when we move into more crazy stuff so what we're gonna do now is let's bring in our 3d model and then we're gonna change in some settings we're gonna track it into place so right click down here let's go to new and then let's go to solid and I'm just going to name this arch and click OK now let's go to our effects and presets and look up the element plugin from Video Copilot. And this is what I use for all of my After Effects 3D compositing. If you don't have element, the most bare bones you can do is you could also use green screen clips. You can find green screen clips anywhere on the internet if you just search, for example, green screen pyramid, key out the green, and then just do the same exact thing. You don't need a 3D object. If you're looking for a free green screen pack, check out my website, like I said, link down below, 100% free, and it's gonna give you a big pack of some starter essential green screen clips that I use on a daily basis. But anyways, I'm gonna be using element I recommend that you get it a link to that will be down below let's go ahead and click scene setup in our effect controls for element and set this up all right so here we are in element let's go ahead and click import and then let's find that 3d model that we saved before go ahead and open that up and like I said you can open up either obj's or c4d's then element and let's go ahead and just click normalize size to make this a bit bigger and then let's go let's go through here and make sure everything is okay so we can open this up let's click on our actual texture and I'm pretty sure this came with a bump map with the crack 
cracks of this look a little more realistic. So let's click for normal bump and then let's click load texture. Let's load it from a file. This is just depends on the model that you get. So here's my folder C4D bridge and here is the bump map. Let's open that up and then click OK. And as you can see, it just gets a little bit more uh, realistic. All right, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and click OK and that's going to pop into our 3D scene. Now, as you see, um, it's kind of just floating in 3D space. So let's go ahead and move it. Let's go ahead and move this around to put this in the position we want. So up in our effect controls, let's go to world transform and we'll open up the rotation too. And now we can just change the X and Y position as well as the Z position. And then we can scroll through here to see what that ultimately is going to look like. So let's bring the Z back a little bit. All right, so that's looking okay. Now all we need to do is just add some more shadows to make it look a little more realistic. So what we can do is let's go to our render settings in Element, and I'm gonna show you guys some useful little tips just to make this look a bit better. So first off, what we can do is go to lighting, and you guys can choose any kind of lighting that you want to kind of match the scene. So something like sunset, cinema, you guys can choose whatever it is you would like. Of course, what you can do is always just add any kind of a color correction effects within After Effects, such as curves, brightness, contrast, any of that, you can just do normal color grades but let's go back up to our element 3d settings and back to our render settings let's close lighting down for a second we're going to open up the ambient occlusion section this is where you can really manipulate a lot of the shadows what we're going to do is enable ao go ahead and make this ray traced now you guys can change any of these settings here just to kind of improve the shadows so i would just tweak with it a bit you guys are going to see a difference and yeah i haven't mentioned that tip in any of my other tutorials but it is a very useful way and just changing around the shadows and the look of your actual model now another way to make this look a little more realistic is let's hide this for a second go ahead and add some shadows to make this look a little more realistic and what I'm gonna do is just click on my arch click control D to duplicate it and then with your normal pointer tool just grab the top of this and just invert it drag it down like that now what we can do is go to our effects and presets look up a little fill effect drop it onto our duplication and then in our effect controls let's make that black and then what we can do is click toggle and switch toggle switches and modes button down here and we can change the blending mode and usually i use soft light but you guys can mess around with that so that's looking a little more shadowy let's go ahead and also add a little gaussian blur effect onto there so that it doesn't look so um, crisp and there you go so a little bit more realistic of a shadow i'm going to do the same thing and put a shadow in the middle here so i'm going to go ahead and make a new solid and then i'm going to just mask this solid out as a circle I'm going to click toggle switches and modes. I'm going to make that a 3D layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and add Gaussian blur onto there. And then I'm going to go into my transform options and I'm going to actually change where this is. You can also change the orientation to make it you can also change the orientation so it looks like it's on the ground. And this part is mainly just tweaking settings, changing around the opacity, changing around that Gaussian blur to kind of make it blend in with the scene. So this is really just going to depend on your actual scene itself. Something like that just creates some nice shadows. All right, and that is the basics of compositing within Element 3D. Of course, the best outcomes come with just sitting there and just tweaking the settings until you get it perfect as possible. But now what we're going to do is we're going to hop into Cinema 4D 3D software, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this within there because we can create way more amazing things we have the octane render engine which i'm going to talk about a little bit later we can create animations and we can composite them in so let me show you exactly how to do that so we're going to put a little zombie walking through this archway like you guys saw at the beginning and it's not going to be the most photorealistic zombie i'm just going to go on turbo squid grab a free zombie model but i'm going to show you how to make that look more hd render it out so that it looks really cool and crisp i'm going to show you how to animate it without having to do any work so anyways let's hop right into that so let's go and find our zombie model let's hop on the internet real quick so turbo squid zombie and we're going to go ahead and search make sure you're looking for the free section and I use this one right here so whenever you download it it's just gonna be in this T pose go ahead and download that or whatever thing you would like to composite in you can do the same thing you can you can composite in cinema 4d structures but I'm gonna do it with an actual figure and animate it just so I can show you a wide range of things you're able to do so once you've done that let's go ahead and open up cinema 4d you guys can also follow along using any other 3d software if you'd like Okay, so zombie FBX file, let's open that up, click OK, and here's what it looks like normally just within Cinema 4D. As you see, just a T-pose, it's not animated yet, I'm going to show you how we can quickly animate that. Now let's see what this looks like in Octane. I recommend you guys get this, it's only $20 a month, and it's probably the best plugin for doing these renders, because you get this live viewer window, which allows you to see in real time what it's going to look like rendered out. Not only that, but it gives you access to a bunch of insanely useful tools. So I'm just going to place this live viewer window here, and then fire it up by clicking this button. You guys are going to 
see what that looks like. So just from this Octane render engine, it's already looking really, really good. And we're gonna go through the settings later just to change things up. But now what I wanna do is I want to animate this. Let's go back onto the internet and we're gonna use this site that is very useful, owned by Adobe, and that is called Mixamo. I talked about this in some videos I made a few weeks ago. Super useful tool that automatically rigs and animates based off whatever you pick from these boxes. So all you need to do is click upload character and then let's go ahead and just select our zombie. All right, so here it is, it's uploaded. And as you can see, it just automatically rigged it and knows where the joints are. Let's click next and then next again. It's gonna load in here. Now what we can do is we can search through here and pick any animation you want. So you can make it dance, you can make it run. So let's just add in this little kicking animation that we have going on here. And that's gonna be pretty easy to do. All right, so now I'm just gonna click download and I'm gonna change the frames per second to 60. With skin is okay, format FBX. Go ahead and click download. I already did it, so I'm not going to need to. All right, now that you have that in there, let's go ahead and open that animation into Cinema 4D. So let's click file, open, and then just open up that FBX that you just downloaded and here we have it within and here we have it within Cinema 4D. Click that Octane button again just to see what it looks like. And it's looking super cool. Let's play out this animation for you guys to see. And bam, we have this kicking animation. The original example I did with him just, I did him just walking, but I think this one looks pretty cool too. So what I'm gonna do is just make a normal little material. Just double click there. Let's open it up and we can uncheck this, except let's check luminance. Let's make the color, whatever color we want it to glow, maybe yellow. Get red this time, last time I did yellow. And let's make the brightness of this something like 500%. Now we have some red glowing eyes and the glow is a little bit too much as you can see, just adjust that. Now what you can do here is you can add any lighting if you would like to. So I'm gonna go up to my live viewer and I'm gonna click objects, lights, octane area light. And then what I'm gonna do is just move this so that it is kind of lighting up our zombie. Nothing too crazy, maybe something like that. That, you can also make the temperature whatever you like so maybe a little warm just cause it's gonna be in the daylight. All right, now let's go ahead and composite this into our scene. Now to do this, here's what we're gonna do. Let's let's first save this, so file, save as, and I'm just gonna name this zombie kick C4D. Now that that's saved, let's hop back into After Effects and we're gonna go ahead and use that track saw that I was talking about before to actually track in where we want our zombie. So what we can do here is just make sure your track solid is showing. Let's go up to file, export, and we're gonna click max on cinema 4d exporter and it's gonna say two later 2d layers found these will not be exported that's fine just click ok and then we can just save this wherever so save that let's go back into cinema 4d and we're gonna open up that save that we just did in after effects so file open all right now here is what we are looking at so as you see we have our track solid and let's just open up this null so we can see what we're looking at we also have the 3d camera tracker that was in after effects now this is super useful because now what we can do because now as you see if i play through here it has the same tracking information as we do in our after effects scene so now we can composite that in we don't need this black solid so let's delete that delete this other solid all we have is our blue solid that we made before that is behind our arch so just to give you guys a little bit of a better visual representation of this let's go ahead and make this a little bit easier what i'm going to do is just hide all these layers for now because we don't need them we just want to render out our footage so we can use that as a reference so let's go to file export add to render queue and then let's go ahead and just choose our settings here and we can save it as an AVI, that's fine. So let's save that. I'm just gonna name it footage reference. Save that, click render. It's going to export out just like this. Now let's go back in Cinema 4D and then let's open up a folder and let's find that footage that we just rendered out in After Effects. So here it is, footage reference, drag that into your materials. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to go up here to our tools, hold click on this floor and then create a background and then drag that 3D material onto the background. So now what we have is we have a picture of a picture reference of the footage that we actually had before. Now to make this a little bit better, what we're gonna do, double click on that 3D material, go down to editor, and then we're going to check animated preview. And now as you see, we have our footage just how, just like how it was in After Effects, so it's gonna be super easy to composite this in now. Now let's bring in our zombie animation and we can wrap this all up and then finish off the compositing in After Effects. So. Let's go up to our objects and click file, merge objects, and then let's go ahead and find that zombie Cinema 4D file that we saved earlier. And here's what our animation looks like. Now we need to reposition this, but the only issue is since this is an animation, let's go ahead and click our zombie, I'll hold down shift and just select every part of it. Anytime we move that around, 
as you see it moves but then when we scroll it's just going to pop right back into place because the animation keyframes are telling it to stay at that position so what we need to do to actually get it in the right position and it's actually almost there it's just a little bit off the ground is we need to do a simple little trick here that i'm going to show you and that trick is holding down shift c it's going to pop up this little command search bar we're going to look up the word animation and it's the one that just says animation none of this other stuff just click that usually it's the first or the second one and actually drag that over here to your bar on the left drag that there that's looking okay now let's click on that animation work mode we can now move this zombie and it's going to move the animation with it I'm just going to click on these joint i'm just going to click on this joints the little green one here and we're going to move that and you're going to see it's all going to move together which is nice so you don't have to select all of them just one of them and now let's go ahead and position this where we want to since we have that 3d camera tracker in there everything is set the way it should be so what you can do now is if you want you can actually hide the track solid now we can render this out within octane and then just bring that over into after effects throw in the finishing touches and we're all done so simple as that let's go ahead and set the render up so go ahead and click on your octane settings important thing here is this right here so you want to check alpha channel make sure you do that and you'll see in the render window it has this checker you want to check alpha channel because that way we're rendering out just the zombie without the background so keep that in mind we don't want to have any background because when we bring it back in after effects it'll already be tracked because we have our 3d camera tracker and we can close that down and then let's open up our actual render settings make sure that the output is your same width and height as your normal footage so mine was 1920 by 1080 frame rate make sure it's going from zero to however long the animation is you can also just click frame range click all frames all right now let's click on save and you're going to want to uncheck both of these so make sure all of these are unchecked you can also check multi-pass if you want to it's not required click render and go to octane render and then click on our octane render settings and then we're going to want to go to render passes now make sure this is enabled and then you can choose where you would like to save this so choose whatever folder so since you're going to be rendering out a bunch of different pictures i usually just put it in my 3d folder i create a new folder so let's name this zombie kick animation and then click save now change the format from exr to png is the main things that we want to get down so just double check your settings make sure that's looking all good exit out of here and then go ahead and click this render to picture viewer this is going to pop up saying there's no file name just say yes because we have our we have our octane render settings set and you're going to see it's going to start rendering it out frame by frame in that folder that you selected so there it is and it's going to go through and do all of those frames and it's going to put it in the folder that we want to so it's pretty simple let's go ahead and just go to project and then we're just going to right click in here and we're going to go to import multiple files now let's go and find that folder where we just rendered out all of our stuff all you need to do is click the very first one and click import and it's going to import that all in so as you see we have frame 0 to 226 now you just need to drag that in now if it's out of sync the reasoning behind that is it might have messed up the settings so project and then right click on our original sequence and then let's go to interpret footage main and then let's change this frame rate so right now it's saying 30 but actually we render that out as 24 click ok drag that out to fix it and now you guys are going to see that it is perfectly tracked where we want it to be right between there and it's a little bit laggy so i have it on third but if you put it on full you guys will be able to see the full quality of the zombie and because of that octane render engine it's looking pretty cool and then the last steps of this just to finish it all off add a color grade using any of the color correction effects within after effects such as curves brightness all that stuff you can look through here click effects and click color correction and then doing the same thing we did with the arch creating some shadows so here are the shadows that I created, as you can see right there. And we're going to do that using the same steps. Just control D, take it, drag it down like that, place it under the feet. And then we do the same thing. We add a little fill effect, add that fill effect onto there, make the fill effect black in your effect controls. So change it to black and then toggle switches and modes, change your blending mode to something like soft light, add a little Gaussian blur, mess around with the opacity and just like that super simple guys like i said anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial leave a like comment subscribe some more videos coming out talking about octane i have some more premiere videos some more after effects videos more tutorials about music video editing incorporating 3d stuff into music video editing a whole bunch of awesome stuff coming anyways guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys later